Here we go. And I guess I will move myself out of the way there. So, okay. So guys, welcome. This is our second official team call, which I'm pretty pumped about. And um, I'm, before we kind of dive into the meat and potatoes of the call, I am Bria, the original creator of Success Fit with all of you guys. So I'm really excited to be here with you tonight. And I just want to run through some recognition and announcements because we've got some great things happening on our team right now. Um, and bear with me as I obviously figure, oh, there we go. Okay, so I just want to cover last month, at the end of May, we had some great, like so many people come like really pushing it and hitting success club and, and getting success club points. And, and I just want to recognize that like Chanel and Larissa had huge months at 20, which is really an amazing thing that's helping a lot of people. Christine had 10, Martha eight, Erica six, Shelly six, Shelby six, Taylor six. And Taylor, it was her very first month coaching, like first couple weeks. So that's really exciting. And Suzanne with five. And then we had a lot of really close, but you know, any, any, point that you get is a person you're helping. So, you know, I think everyone deserves a good virtual high five for that one. Um, and then I wanted to dive in just to talk one more time about Summit. I touched on it in our last call. Um, I think I just wanted to sort of tell you from the bottom of my heart that if you are serious about this and if, if you can swing it this year, I know that for some of you just signing on, it's, it's, um, it's really close, but there's a lot of value in what Summit provides beyond like the amazing celebrity workouts and beyond um, the fun and the parties that we get to be together. Like what you get out of the keynote speakers and the training is really just massive. And everyone I know who attended Summit last year is here still this year. So if you can swing it, I would come. And if not, make a promise to yourself that you will be there next year. Um, but think of it as an investment into you and into your business and into your future of this because it's totally worthwhile. Um, and whether you're going to Summit or not, I just want to remind you to push your business towards Summit. You know, Summit is sort of a little over the halfway mark in July, and you really want to be pushing as much as you can to grow your business to that point. Use that as sort of a halfway marker in the year. Um, Okay, I wanted to remind you that of the transformation picks that we're trying to put together. So if you didn't see it in Success Fit, we're trying to put together um, a page of all of the coaches' transformation pictures and maybe any transformation pictures of challengers you've had that have okayed you to use them and put them in an area that we all have access to. Um, so if you haven't sent me your pictures, if you could put it together in a collage and shoot it over to me as soon as possible so I can share that with everyone. Um, I also wanted to let you know that I am hosting a what is coaching call zoom call tomorrow night So if you have any prospects that want to jump on the call or any of your challengers that want to know a little bit more about it That um, it's 9 p.m. Eastern and or 6 p.m. Pacific and if you want the link just message me I'd be happy to um, have any of your team or any of your potentials come on that call um, and I guess the last thing I just wanted to remind you of is the challenge are the challenge pack promotions on this month because they are my favorite. When the 21 Day Fix goes on promotion, it is always my best month. And I think a lot of you guys can um, relate to that. It's a, such a great program, as you heard both Terry and Colleen talking about amazing results coming out of theirs. And I just think this is it's such a huge opportunity to take advantage of the promotions because basically people are getting a program for $11 when ordering Shakeology. So make sure you're going back to all those people who expressed interest in the past or anyone who maybe has talked about money being an issue or even who are just interested in Shakeology and talk to them about the opportunity in, in taking advantage of this challenge pack. Okay, that's it for that, into business, real business. So what I really wanted to talk about with you guys today was inviting and how to, um, you know, we talk a lot in, and you'll hear a lot through the TV 20 training about how we share and not sell. And I, I really line up with that. It's really important that what we're doing out there is sharing our story. But in saying that taking someone through this invitation process, um, there are some sales skills that come along with that and selling is a skill and you can learn it, which is great. So if you haven't had any experience in that, I just want to go through with you guys today some of the key things in the invitation process. Um, it's five steps and I added in a zero for an extra, so six steps. <laughs> um, and, and try to give you some key tips that what, on what I have learned over the years that have really helped me 
hone that invitation process and get a better success rate to really help more people. Um, so, you know, when we reach to this point of inviting, we've kind of kind of assumed that at this point you've posted your own transformation pics, um, you've generated likes and interest um, on your fitness and healthy living posts because we're posting two to three times a day, right? Um, and something I always like to remind everyone is that you want to be putting on your fitness coach hat so that you want to constantly be generating interest by being passionate about what you do. So whether it's wearing wear and share out where you go so that people are like, oh, look, you're a beach body coach or oh, look, 21 day fix or whatever it is that you're wearing or just um, leading with that when someone asks you what you do, that you're a fitness coach. When you, when you embody being a fitness coach everywhere you go, people will start to notice and ask more questions to you, and it becomes a more organic procedure. So now what? You've generated interest. Now what? And this is where we enter the invitation process. Um, and I am going gonna, gonna to show some scripts that I use throughout this, um, but I wanted you to know that all the scripts that I use this are in the success fit files in some of the script, um, the script files that I've put in there, but I'll also save this of course, we're recording it and I'll save it and upload it there too, so you'll have access. So what I like to call step zero <laughs> is actually connecting with your likes. Um, so you started to post and put things out there. And I remember as a new coach um, being like, okay, so I'm supposed to add a certain amount of people to my network every day and I'm supposed to um, reach out and connect and build a relationship with people each day and invite people each day, but I don't know who the heck I'm supposed to do that to. Uh, so the first thing that I like to share and encourage people to do and that I do in my business is whenever I make a post on social media and it does have to do with um, fitness, then I always, those are the people I initially start to develop a relationship with. If it has to do with fitness or health and they've obviously expressed you know, some support by liking it or commenting. Those are the first people that I go to when it comes to um, developing a friendship or growing a friendship with. And something I went say to them is like, hey, you know, hey, Sarah, thanks so much for your support with liking my pick. I'm a little gun shy about putting myself out there, but I can, if I can inspire or help anyone, then it's worth it. So thanks. How are you doing? And um, you'll notice that as I go through my scripts, I really like to always make sure I, an I end a message with a question because you want to encourage people to write back to you that ending with a period doesn't always um, encourage people to respond but if you end with a question they're more likely to respond to you so um, that's something that I would say to someone who has expressed interest or, or maybe just shown some like or support on on a fitness post or a health post but to friends who maybe I haven't spoken with in, in a while if when it's time to building those friendships or if I haven't heard from anyone a little bit then what I like to say is like is hey it was so great to see your name pop up on my news feed how are you doing what are you up to these days or to brand new friends when you go and you're adding new friends to your network um, something I really find effective is, is being like hey thanks thanks for the F Facebook ad and for your support on my page are you a fellow fitness coach or are you working on some changes in your life and I just find that these three little scripts when I use them in trying to just connect and start like open that door with people that seems to allow me to get in a little bit further with them and I hear back so that's your first step and then step one your official step one is of the invitation process is sharing information um, so you've now they now know you're a fitness coach and they're kind of asking a little bit more about what you do and you've had some nice general dialogue back and forth um, so they want to know about what a challenge is and how much it costs, right? A lot of people, that's the first thing they'll ask is like, well, what is this and, and how much does it cost? But, or you'll even see that when you post about challenges on your Facebook page. Well, how much is the program? So a couple things, you know, your goal in this message back to them is really to explain a little and of course, end with a question to get them talking. You always want to address people's questions. It's kind of rude to not. But I really like to share first of what a challenge or accountability group is. And for me as a coach and for us as coaches, they're actually the most effective thing that we do. Um, you work with each person to choose a fitness program that fits their lifestyle and interests to do at home along with the nutritional element. And it's all done online. And those are important things to share with people. Um, and I think what's something I like to make a point of here is just that 
if you're just starting out and these are your friends that you're talking to or, you know, past friends, it's also nice to insert a little bit of your story in there, you know, just, it, just share about how a challenge group affected your life so they can see why you're passionate about it. And then a second part of step one is that if, if you have to answer this price question, so if they have come right out and asked you how much, and it's not that I think you should ever avoid the price question. I just think that um, it's really important. Ideally, you share the value of what we're offering before we just throw out a price. Um, but if, if I do need to answer it, I will. I do like to give them um, a range and let them understand that it really depends. Like my coaching is free, that the cost is the program that we choose for them, um, and that it does range. So that's how I like to explain that price in the beginning because I want them to know that it really depends on them, but that I'm here to help. And if, if now isn't a good time, then, you know, we can take a look at other options, that kind of thing. So that's step one. You've now shared a little bit with people about what the, a challenge group is and how it works. And you head into step two, which is all about them. And step two is the most critical part of what we do in the invitation process. And in the beginning, I think that I would, you know, turn people off, or maybe I didn't, I didn't really, um, I didn't get to help as many people, or I wasn't as successful because I didn't spend enough time in this step. And I think what I want to share with you guys is that you must be clear on two things before you kind of feel like you've completed this step two and move on. And they are one, what are they trying to achieve? What are they trying to achieve in their body? You want to make sure you completely understand. Um, are they trying to lose weight? Are they trying to tone up? Do they have a lot of weight to lose, a little weight to lose. Are they trying to gain weight? You know, are they trying to put on muscle? What exactly are they trying to accomplish? Just lose some baby weight, gain more flexibility, maybe they're recovering from an injury. It's very important that you understand that picture so that you can start looking at the right program for them. And number two is what are their pain points? What do they struggle with? You know, what is it that um, they struggle with on their own that they're unable to actually accomplish this um, goal that they have? Uh, on their own. What, what is that? So that you can then share with them why what you have matches that for them. And, and as I said, you should really spend the most time in this step. You should be clear without a doubt that what you have to offer will help them get through number two and achieve number one. And of course, why? Um, and I really, a rule of thumb that kind of helps me, especially in the beginning and that I still use is that every time I think I'm ready to move on, every time I think I know this person enough, um, is that I ask one more question. And I'll say one more thing I'd like to say that I actually learned at Summit last year in one of the workshops was um, one of the coaches said that unless you're, you feel like you know someone well enough to invite them over to your house or to your birthday party, don't ask them. Don't move away from this step. Make sure you truly understand this person um, so that you can truly help them, which is what we're trying to do here. And I just thought I'd throw out some other sample questions that I like to ask or that I've asked in the past to find that I find helpful in getting to know more about someone. Um, so right up front, typically I do ask, like, what are you trying to achieve? And, you know, what do you think you're struggling with? But sometimes people don't get very deep in those answers. Um, you know, they're like, oh, well, I just want to lose weight. And, you know, it's they, they keep it very general. So it's important to ask more deeper questions to kind of dig down in there. Um, so I like to ask what workouts have you liked or hated in the past? You know, like, have you been to the gym? Have you worked at home? Do you like to run? Because you want to understand if this person is a big fan of cardio or if they absolutely despise cardio, if they like yoga, if they hate yoga, you know, if they've ever done any type of boot camp work before, you want to understand these things because that's really going to help direct you, um, to the right program for them. It's, I always really like to know, like, do you have any injuries? Do you have any food sensitivities or allergies? Because you don't want to start sharing Shakeology with them, um, you know, the regular one, if they have, if they're a vegan or if they have any dairy issues. You want to know that so you can say to them, when you start talking about Shakeology, you can say to them about um, the, how the vegan option is a really good thing for them because it's dairy free. Um, Besides you, who would benefit from you getting fit? So sometimes, you know, when I'm really getting deep into a conversation with someone, I do like to help them paint. You want to help them paint a picture of 
how their life will be different, whose lives around them, like their children, their partner, how all those things will be different and better if they're able to achieve this goal that they want. Will anyone be joining me with you for this journey? Are you currently working with a doctor, personal trainer, coach, or nutritionist? Um, what do you think is harder for you, eating clean or getting your workouts done? And that's a good one to know too, because it really plays into understanding um, what those pain points are. You know, if they really struggle with nutrition, you're going to want to look more at 21 Day Fix program with a nutritional guide. And you're going to want to talk to them about Shakeology because that is such an important part of people's nutrition. Is there something special coming up that you're wanting to get in shape for? Um, you know, asking them specifically, well, why, you know, I want to lose 20 pounds. Okay, well, it's important to know why they'd want to lose 20 pounds if that's an obscure number, you know. If they're only 120 pounds to begin with, maybe they shouldn't be losing 20 pounds. Or, you know, maybe they're being unrealistic and you just want to make sure you're understanding of what that is for them to set expectations. And how much time do you have a day to commit to working out in food prep? And that's one of my favorites because obviously a lot of what we offer here and a lot of these great programs um, really fit into people's lives because people really can make time for 30 minutes a day. So those are some of the questions I like to ask in step two. And you can see why you can spend a lot of time in there back and forth. And I know, it, especially in the beginning as a coach, this was the most time consuming part of what I did was the conversing back and forth with people. So if you can get on the phone with someone and talk to them about those things, that's going to move it along faster, but you will get better as time goes on. So step three, validate and relate. And I think this is really important. Now you understand that you truly, that you, you truly know what it is that um, they're trying to achieve and that you can without a doubt recommend something to them that is going to hit those pain points and really help them achieve the goals that they want. So what you want to do next is to make sure that you truly understand their needs and repeat them back to them and, and empathize and we call this validating because when you say it back to someone, it becomes more clear to both of you what it is they're trying to achieve. So I might say, okay, so what you really struggle with is finding time in your day to make time for you and making quick meals or, you know, you want to just validate that back to them and also empathize. Um, I really like to just share my story um, and relate their pain points with solutions from my own journey. So if they are struggling to lose the last of the baby weight, then I'll talk about how it helped me and how I've been there. And I know what that's like. And if you can't relate to that, try to find another coach or another challenger or think of someone else's story and you'll collect stories as you go that you can relate for them so that they know that what's unique about them has helped someone else too. So it will work for them. And as I mentioned, always end your response with a question. Does that make sense? Does that sound like something that would benefit you? Um, because it, it helps you to validate as well that, that you're on the same page as you go through the invitation um, process. And something, a little tip that I learned a long time ago, and you'll hear it also through, um, <clears throat> through the training, is this concept of feel, felt, found. Um, and it's, I think it's an actual sales training tip. But it's, it's a great way for you to empathize with people, again, and validate. So saying something like, I totally understand how you feel. Um, finding time was the most difficult thing for me, but committing to something that was only 30 minutes a day really helped me to finally be successful and put my health first. So that is something that I find really, really helpful. Okay, long script here. I'm sorry, I'm talking a lot tonight, but I guess it's because I'm hosting the call. <laughs> um, so step four, now that you understand what their needs are, you've explained what an actual challenge group is, and you have validated what they're trying to achieve, then um, you can t introduce them to what a challenge pack actually is, what it is they're gonna be purchasing, you know, what it is that they need now in order to um, hit these goals and join your challenge group and do it together. And this is what shows the value as it relates, this is where you really wanna show the value as it relates to them. Um, so again, I'm going to read the script. I'm sorry that's super boring, but I, I think that it's, there's a few things I just want to outline that are really critical in here. So, um, so this is when I would say, okay, so the program I'm thinking about for you is called the 21 Day Fix, uh, and then I ask, have you ever heard of it? Um, because sometimes they have, and it's important that you don't, you know, dive too far into things if they already know or they can share some of the things that they've learned, and you can make sure that that is true. Um, I've been working with it since last February when it launched, and it's given some of the most consistent and best results I've seen as a coach. 
And this is when I like to share what I love about it. You want to share what you're excited about about this program. What I love about it is that it has seven different workouts, 30 minutes each, and includes everything from your cardio to your weights, Pilates, and yoga. So it really helps keep your body guessing. And then here's the second piece where you want to show that value as it relates to them. For you, I love that it is short and effective, which is why it's been so great for many of my challengers. And again, I think that's a really critical point because you've found out what their pain point is, what they struggle with, and you're showing them how this specific thing applies to that. Um, and then I explained about the nutrition guide. It comes with an amazing nutrition guide. That is what I really fell in love with. Again, you're sharing your passion. It helps a lot with teaching how to keep balance and portions in your nutrition. So you know how much protein versus carbs versus fruit versus veg versus fat is ideal for max results, performance, and functionality. It was a real eye opener for me. So again, you want to share your experience. You're really trying to put yourself in here um, so that they can, you can relate to them. Uh, plus, it comes with 30 days of Shakeology, so you need to introduce Shakeology in there. Plus, it comes with 30 days of sh Shakeology, which is my big lifesaver and totally changed my nutrition two years ago. And again, have, have you heard much about it? You want to make sure you want to surface those questions um, and those potential objections so you don't have to deal with them later. You can actually have it when they say, well, I've never heard of Shakeology or I've heard this and I don't know that I like shakes. You'll have an opportunity then to explain to them what Shakeology is um, so that you're not having to deal with that at the end or if that is never surfacing, which often happens. If you get crickets at the end of sending, you know, something like this, often people are like, well, I'm not going to drink that or just they haven't had the opportunity to ask the questions that they want. Um, and then I like to explain the on demand and how it's important. So you're kind of seeing, they're seeing the value. They're getting a whole program. They're getting nutrition guide. They're getting 30 meals of Shakeology. They're getting um, 12 other programs on digital streaming. And they're getting the group. And I, I really like to emphasize that because anyone can buy a program or a challenge pack, but really when they dive into these challenge groups, that accountability is what keeps people, what gets people results, is keeping them there, keeping them consistent. And finally, in this step, I think it's really important. Obviously, you want to share the cost of the of the program. The package is normally $176. Um, so you know, in this example, this is something I'd sent to someone last month, you know, when I was trying to work towards my June success club, I might explain that I think that there's a promotion coming up um, in case it goes on promo, who loves, who doesn't love a deal. Um, so, and then I say, this is what tip challengers typically follow, but if that's not ideal for you, I always want to help. So we can look at a program on its own outside of the challenge pack and simply find what works for you right now. And I think that's a really important element that helps people because they, you know, as much as I think eventually everyone can budget for something like this, you know, they might not be in their budget in this exact moment. So they need to know that you're going to be there to help them no matter what. Lots of talking. <clears throat> I'm getting through this. Step five, instructions to order. And Chanel actually did a really great job of, she put this together and shared it with us on the last um, team call. So I wanted to use it here. You want to make this part seamless. <clears throat> so if they said, once they said, okay, I'm ready to go, you want to make sure that you, um, it always bugs me when it, it's difficult to spend money. If I want something, it should be very easy for me to order and spend my money and get the thing that I want, because otherwise it gets frustrating. Um, and I think over time we've discovered this is the most effective and seamless way uh, to, to help people order. And, and just along with that, I think it's important to note that if your customer is, has any issues at all, even one, that's when you need to get in there. You need to get on the phone with Coach Relations or you need to take a look at what's happening or reach into your upline and, and get it sorted so that it doesn't happen twice. You wanna help them get it fixed after the first time. And um, so you can see in the steps here, you wanna click join, you wanna send them to your website, have them click join and create a free profile first. That's really important. You wanna hover and then send them the specific instructions on how to do this. And I know that this exact infographic Chanel has put in the photos and success fit. So you'll see it there. Um, but the one last thing I wanted to do before I kind of move on into follow up, assuming Chanel's around, um, is, is just to share that once I have generated some interest and I'm dialoguing with people about a challenge, I like to open up my challenge group because we're gonna, it's going to be open a week early for prep week anyway. But I like to open it up almost two weeks early and I add every single person who's expressed interest into that. And I let them know that this is our private group and for everyone who's expressed interest. 
And um, if you find that this is not the right time for you, that's okay. As we get closer, you'll remove them or they can message you and you can remove them. But for those who are ready, this is something that really changed my life and here's why. Um, and it's just an opportunity, I think, to kind of generate some hype and, you know, as people order, you can almost welcome them officially to the group, that kind of thing. So that is my overview of the five-step invitation process. And we will have time for questions at the end if you have some. So um, I'm going to move in and see if Chanel, Chanel, are you there? Can I unmute you to, or can you unmute? Un I'm here. Okay, good. I'm going to mute then. You couldn't see my little box? Well, I, I have it because I'm recording. I have it set so that I can only see the person who's talking. Oh. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. Okay. Yay. I, I actually am um, free <laughs> and unscattered at the moment. So um, I, this will not be long. Well, I always say that and then that doesn't pan out. Um, so I had some notes on inviting, but I think Bria did a really, really good. I mean, I know Bria did a really, really good job. I don't think that I have anything to add to that on, for the inviting part. Um, I'll talk about following up. Um, yeah, I guess one like additional tip that goes along with um, that invitation process, um, this came from Janelle Summers, is the less you say, the more you make. So it's fine to, to say a lot kind of more near the end where they're, they're moving towards a commitment and then you're explain, explaining the program and everything. But towards the beginning of the, the process, like especially step two when you're asking people questions, um, it's really important to let them speak and keep asking questions and, and really it's all about them. So you may find you're having a lot of conversations but you really don't um, need to say that much and you shouldn't say that much at that time. Of course you wanna validate people, like you don't just wanna like ask a series of questions and not respond to what they said. Um, but you don't want to jump in too early with your solution. You really want to let that um, step two play out fully. That was like a big thing I learned. <laughs> so that's why I'm sharing that. Um, the other reason why I would say it's really important to spend a lot of time in step two is you'll realize as you start to take these challengers through, um, well, first of all, for objections. So if someone says, you know, tells you like this whole novel about how they need to change their life, but then they, you know, they don't want to spend like, you know, $200 on, on this thing, you know, you can bring that back and say, well, what is it going to cost you to not do this? You know, you've already told me that, um, you know, A, B, C, D, E are, are wrong in your life because of this. And, you know, so it's kind of like, but you can't put your arm around someone and say that until you've heard their, their whole story. And then, and then the next reason why this is important is because you will be far better able to help them follow through in the challenge group if you know, like, and you have that like deep connection with them, you know why they're doing this and why this is important to them. It will be so much easier for you to message them and say, I know what's riding on this. I'm not going to let you give up. Like, go do your workout right now. If you don't know, like, their whole story, like, I've been in the situation, it's kind of awkward to, like, message them and, and tell them to work out or whatever if they fall off the wagon. I, I feel like I can do so much of a better job as a coach when I know um, people's needs and why they're doing this and why this is important to them. It's so much easier for me to to help them follow through if, if they're having, if they're struggling. Um, and it also helps me to know what to emphasize and what, you know, in throughout the challenge group, um, you know, so, cause everyone has different weak points. So if, if someone has a weak point that I know about and they're, I watch them overcome this in the group, I can bring that up. I can say, Oh, like, look at how far you're coming with this. Remember, like, I remember, where you started from when you told me, you know, binge eating was a real big problem. Like, look at you haven't done that in three weeks. Like I'm so proud of you. And you can address those, you know, specific things that were a struggle to them. Um, so that's, that's why it's important to really 
understand for the long run um, who you're taking through this. This is really all about relationships. And then in the even longer run, if that person becomes a coach, then you've really set up this relationship from the very beginning. It's, it's you know, that makes it a lot smoother. Okay, so that's all I wanted to add about the um, emphasis on step two. And I guess I'll just say there's a couple, so this book called is called Go Pro. And it's a really good book um, for, you know, learning how to do this as a professional. You know, sometimes we forget that we are professionals in this. Sometimes it seems like a lot of fun. We're posting fun things on Facebook. We're having friends. Our challenge groups are fun. We post selfies. And we might forget that we are professional fitness networkers. And so we need to be professional. And following up is professional. People get afraid to follow up, but really it's our duty. So there's just four concepts in this book. You can get the book to read them in detail, but concept number one, follow up is doing what you said you would do. So that's it. <laughs> it's, you know, it's creating trust and um, yeah, so this leads us to concept number two. The only reason to have an exposure is to set up the next exposure. So exposure or meeting or, or, or message or whatever is to set up the next message. So you're always going to be setting up that follow-up so that it's not um, awkward when, when they don't reply and then you're like messaging and chasing people. You don't want to be chasing People, you want to set this up um, so that each conversation sets up the expectations. So if someone is going to go research a part of the program or go research psychology, or you're going to provide them some materials for that, um, you're going to have them, you know, let you know when they're going to do it, and you're going to set the expectation that you're going to follow up after they had promised to do it. So you would say, I'm going to send you, I'll send you this video. Um, would that help you? Yes. Okay. When can you watch it for sure? I can watch it tonight. Okay, great. I'll follow up with you at 9 PM tonight or whatever, something like that. And then if, if they don't end up doing it, that's fine. Um, don't get mad at them. Just be like, no problem. I understand like things get in the way. When can you watch it for sure? For sure. And I'll follow up with you again. And so the importance in having, you know, your prospect or whatever make their own commitments is so that they own, they own these things and it's a commitment they're making. And it's, a, it's basically like a meeting that they are making and they are going to be expecting you to follow up rather than you, you know, feeling annoying that you have to like message all these people all the time who aren't replying to you. So basically at the end of every conversation, you want to be setting up the next one. Um, so concept number three, it takes an average of four to six exposures for the average person to join. Um, so I just underlined something in here. So it says four to six exposures is an average, which means that for every person who joins on the first exposure, because that will happen, um, there's going to be a person who takes more than 10 exposures to join. You just never know. Um, so realize that, you know, you might, in the beginning, you might get people who like message you and they're like, okay, sign me up right away. Just know that that's not necessarily going to be the norm and that every person is different. So don't try to set a parameter around how long it should take for you to have conversations with people or for people to, to join or commit to a challenge group. Um, there's no set amount of time. Some people will take one minute and some people will take one year. You know, people can take three years. <laughs> like it, it can take any point of time. So the important thing to remember is um, to keep, you know, you're not having conversations to necessarily close the deal right away, right? You're having the conversations 
to take people through this process and the process can take different amounts of time. Of course, now that brings us to concept number four, condense the exposure for better results. So obviously, if someone's really engaged, then you wanna have those conversations close together or all at once or on the phone or whatever if you can, um, if someone's engaged. But at the same time, yeah, there are those people that are gonna take longer. Um, so there's gonna be a balance between that. Anyway, so just, yeah, I guess know, know that that's something that I didn't really understand. Like, I didn't understand that the people I invited a year ago were going to come around three, six, nine, or 12 months later. I didn't know that. That was a big surprise to me. I kind of thought that, like, when they said no or when they didn't answer my last message, that that was it. I thought it was over. <laughs> and I was so wrong. I was so wrong. And so, um, that makes me feel more comfortable also in following up when people sometimes don't reply because sometimes they just totally forget to reply and then the message gets buried and it's okay to jump back in and say, hey, I don't, I, I'm not sure where we left off, but I just want to check in. Um, and if people do their own thing, continue to check in on their journey. Like, you know, how are they doing at the gym or how are they doing in, the, in some other program that they picked? You know, continue to support them in the same way that you would if they joined your thing. Because in the big scheme of things, what we really want to do is help people to find success. And they're gonna find success in, in this for sure, but they might also find success in other ways. And it's important to respect that and not feel like everyone needs to join this. Because if, if you feel that way, then you're just acting desperate. And that's gonna repel people. So be comfortable in knowing that you have something amazing that can help people, but also be comfortable in knowing that, you know, a few percent of the people might find something else that works and that's okay. There are other people who need this. I'll end with that. Thanks. That was awesome, Chanel. I love that. I think, you know, being okay with the, with the fact that there are other things out there for people, but that what we have is so amazing. And for the, for the people who are ready for it, it's, it's so great. Um, and I also just think that it, I want to just reiterate, I love that what you said about how people coming around three months, six months, nine months, 12 months, it's such a valuable thing to learn because that's why we want to be here still for them. They will come around. That's also why you want to constantly be keeping that you know, funnel of connecting with two to three people a day going because they, as you said, they kind of jump in differently on their decision making journey. So awesome. Um, so before I close up, do you have any questions? I have a, a buddy who came down from his bed. Can you say hi, Jane? Say hi. hi. <laughs> um, can you unmute yourself if you have a question and, and feel free to dive in? That's what we're here for. Hi, Brian. This is Danielle. Oh. Hi, Danielle. Hey, <laughs> I have a question. Um, my sister is considering becoming a discount coach, and when she signed up, she, she didn't get a challenge pack. She just got a bag of Shakeology because she's got a lot of shoulder issues and has had surgery and is afraid to injure herself. But now she's thinking about doing it because she would like the discount because her husband is on it too. Oh yeah. And um, he's got diabetes. So if they would sign, if she would sign up as a discount coach, she would have to purchase a challenge pack. Is that correct? She does not have to. Um, if she doesn't purchase a challenge pack, she has to pay the sign up fee, which is 40, it's different in Canada and the U S what would it be? $40. 40 yeah. yeah. And, um, but, you know, she might find that, you know, before her next Shakeology shipment posts that she cancels that one and then signs up as a coach with the challenge pack. She doesn't want a program. She could do um, like the three-day refresh challenge pack to give her a, sort of a, a detox to go with it. And then that kind of waves that fee all together. Okay. Um, the other thing that I can suggest too um, is the 21-day fix challenge pack. Um, I think is valuable for people when it's on sale because it's only it's ten dollars more than the Shakeology on its own. So it's one forty in the U.S. And even if she doesn't want to do the workouts, she would still get the whole eating plan and portion control containers, and that 
um, would be, you know, really great. That would probably really help her a lot too. Yeah. Danielle, also, if I can add, my <laughs> mom has had, uh, my mom has had shoulder surgery on both of her shoulders twice. Okay. Um, and she was doing 21 day fix and obviously super modifying um, and doing, you know, the small range of motion that she could with her arms and still lost weight and still was able to do a lot of, you know, some of the ab stuff and the leg stuff and, you know, modified hugely with her arms, but was still able to do, you know, a good portion of the 21 day fix workouts. So, and she's oh, like five or something. So is, is, does the eating plan, I haven't had a chance to, to look at all of the programs. Does the eating plan, the eating plan come in any other challenge pack or is it just this one? With the little containers. The containers are just in the 21 day fix challenge pack. Okay. 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 That, that helps me understand it a little bit more. I wasn't really pushing it with her until I found out <laughs> what the answers were. I didn't want to sound like I, I didn't understand. I wanted to explain it to her. <laughs> yeah, that, so. no problem. And I made a, um, a document. It's in the file section of success fit. Do you know how to find the file section? I don't think so. I keep seeing that and I'm not quite sure where it's at. Okay. Um, I think that it's worth it to take a second to show people. This is the number one asked question I see on every thread is where is the files? Bria, would you mind unsharing your screen and I'll share mine? Yeah, for sure. Uh, stop share. There you go. Okay. Thanks. Um, Here we are. Okay. So here's success fit. Um, I'll give you guys a few tips about the groups. So files is here. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm so glad you don't have too many uh, tabs open, Chanel. <laughs> oh, no, now you get to see my life. Well, that's just really simple right there. <laughs> yeah, it's right there. So, um, and I can, I'll show you guys a few other tips since you're on here that have really saved me a lot of time. Um, the search bar is really helpful. Um, oh, but let me just uh, tell you, Danielle, what I wanted to point out to you. Oh, here we go. Coach sign up details and reimbursement form. Know this by heart. This is what you want to know, like inside and out, fully understand. Uh, before you sign anyone up to coach so that there are no surprise charges so that you know you, you tell them the right thing um, because it it's not you know they can't figure this out from the website you have to know how to direct them to do it uh, well they can, maybe can figure it out from the website but you know it's easier to guide people so there's two options so one they they can purchase a challenge pack when they check out um, anytime anyone purchases a challenge pack, it starts a Shakeology auto ship. If it's a coach challenge pack, it's also going to sign them up for club membership. In 30 days, they'll be charged, but they can cancel that. So it's not an obligation, but it's just a thing. So if they're going to be a discount coach and they don't want club membership, which gives them Beachbody on demand, the online uh, streaming, <laughs> that's the word. Um, you just want them to cancel that so they're not surprised with this extra charge. And this challenge, coach challenge pack sign up would waive their forty or fifty dollars sign up fee depending on on what you're in, what country you're in. Um, and then the other option is they can just they can just pay the sign up fee and skip the challenge pack option. And if they already have a Shakeology on Home Direct, if they already have that subscription going, it's just going to continue and it'll just be automatically discounted 25%. Um, they will not be charged automatically for club membership because that's something that, came, that comes with the Coach Challenge Pack. And um, if they had already purchased a Challenge Pack in the past, then they can get this, this fee reimbursed. So I wrote this out here. Um, everyone should review that and know that, like, like off by heart so that you can like recite it. And then here are the monthly fees for a coach. That's, that's um, constant. That's awesome. Thank you so much. I didn't even realize this was on here. 
<laughs> I know. <laughs> it's so much. It seems like it's a lot, you know, but it's not. Once you understand kind of what's going on, like it's 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 obvious, but I just wrote it out in, in the details so that there's like no confusion. Well, it's very easy to understand. Thank you so much. Good. Great, you're welcome. Um, yeah, and then, so another thing is like search. So a lot of times, I know as a new coach, there's like a lot of information and posts and stuff like that, and things can get buried in the group. So you can use the search button, and this also works well in your challenge groups, to be like, oh, so Bria posted recently about the 10-day new coach launch. Where was that post? Like, you don't want to scroll down like 800 posts that have occurred. So you can just search, you know, 10 day, that's enough. You don't want to put too many words in because then it might not find it. And then here I can find the post or team call. I can look up team call and see, uh, see, here's the last post Bria did for the team call. So if you ever get lost <laughs> or you see a post and you're like, where was that? You can use the search button. Um, and then photos are in here as well. So those uh, things that I made, they're far down now. Oh, here they are. So here's the, um, the images for Pio and 21 Day Fix. So this is signing up for the challenge packs um, as a customer. But you can save these to your phone or to your computer and then send them to your... Um, customers when they're ready to sign up with, with your own website cool. and just always remember when people get a challenge pack they're uh you know they're going to be on the shakeology subscription um they can cancel within 30 days and i i always make sure to remind people the first, wow. the first so that there's no surprises there as well okay thank you yeah. when chanel when do you remind them Usually like day 25. Yeah. It get you know, sometimes I don't make it in time, but um gives them the opportunity to, to well for us to talk about it, you know, so I'm going to have a conversation about it and ask them how it's going and um stuff like that and if they want to continue and um if they feel, you know, they don't want to, you know, they like it but the, they don't want to spend all that money then I can offer the to, for them to sign up as a discount coach. I've had, well. I've had a few people balk at the auto ship. Like, oh, if you're gonna if you're gonna send it to me every month, it's gonna be too much. I don't want to do that. And I've said, don't don't worry. Like, it's a really simple phone call to cancel. Um, but I I had one person interested, and I think she bailed because of the auto ship. So what would you, how do you talk your way around that one? Um, uh, I don't encounter that very often. Okay. I have heard of that like every now and then, you know, like I know yeah. Suzanne uh, is on here. She had a client who didn't want to do auto ship. She had a bad experience in the past. Yeah. Um, and so in that, in that case, Suzanne was ordering the Shakeology and bringing it over to her very nice, very kindly. That's so nice. Okay. Thanks. I've had people who, um, who same sort of thing, Jody, who were afraid of the auto ship. And, um, and I've said, you know, before it ships again, I'll remind you. And then like Chanel was saying, we can have a conversation. And if you don't want it, well then at that point you can call and cancel. Um, or I've also said something like if they're, you know, really afraid of it, um, then I'll say, well, as soon as you get your, you know, your challenge pack, then call customer service and, and cancel it if you're really that adamant. But I'm always, I always try to encourage them, you know, try it for a few weeks to see how you like it. Cause you might, you know, you don't want to sort of do all that signing up again and have to order it again if you want to keep on with it. So mm -hmm. I usually try to encourage them to like try it for a few weeks before you cancel it right away yeah. um, and see how it goes. And then if you're still, you know, you're still feeling like you don't want to, um, like you don't want to have it, then at that point call and cancel. Okay. It's so convenient. <laughs> I love that it just shows up. Thank you. Any other questions, guys? Um, I have a question. <laughs> oh, John? <laughs> oh, Sharon. He's been quiet the entire time. As soon as you start talking, Sharon. No, I just said one thing. Excuse me. <laughs> um, 
So I have a question, and that is, uh, I have a client, well, a potential client, and she's very curious about the uh, 21 day fix, but she doesn't want the Shakeology. <laughs> and, uh, and I was sort of, she goes, do you think I can get it without Shakeology? And I said, well, you know, I'll check. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of the best part, you know, but um, anyway. I have a friend also that wants just the exercise program. She doesn't want to get on the shake because she can't afford it. And she's already doing clean eating in her family. So she just wants the exercise program. And I was wondering about that too. You want to take that Chanel? You go for it, Bria. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take my gum out for this one. <laughs> this, is, this is like, like a two hour training. <laughs> No, no, I'm going to try to keep this concise for you. There, there are two aspects of it. First of all, I just want, I always want people to know. And when I was in the invitation process explaining the challenge pack, that's why I do let people know that they can, that they, they, if that price is not ideal for them right now, that it's okay. We can look at programs outside because you do want to help them. You want them to, you want them into your challenge group. You want to help them the best as they you can. Um, however, I think it's really important that you make sure that they understand what Shakeology is and what Shakeology isn't, and that you have shown them, you've sort of applied it to those needs, those pain points. So I, I always just say to them, of course, you can get the program without it. Um, now that's up to you. Some coaches choose not to let people into their challenge groups without it, but I am one that allows people in because at the end of the day, most people will eventually by Shakeology. And I, like Colleen is a perfect example who joined a, pro, a challenge without Shakeology. And here she is, a diamond coach on my team, Shakeology drinker every day over a year later. So, and it happens all the time. So I think it's more, most important that you bring people in and in that you help them and that you are going to talk about Shakeology in your challenge groups because it's a key part of your dense nutrition. So that's my first part of it. And then I would just make sure that as you're explaining to them what it is and why you love it, you just let them know. And then again, at the end of letting them know what it is and why you think it would be a benefit to them, you might say, but it's okay. What I want right now is to help you. So if that's not going to work for you, that's okay. That's okay. okay. Samples and things will come into play because sometimes sending someone a sample is all they really need to have the confidence to order it. That's how I handle it. And anyway, I think there's lots of different ways, but I, I, the, at the end of the day, I really like, I want to help someone. I want to start them on their journey, even if that's just a, a program for now. That was really good, Bria. That's really nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I'll say I, you know, I'm, I'm very nice about it, but at the same time, I'm a little bit strict. I would say I'm more on the stricter end about it. But that's because, now I'm not going to like send someone away if they don't get it. And I'm not strict in that sense, but I'm, I'm really strict in how it's going to meet their needs. And I'm really strict about what they're going to miss out on if they don't use it. And what I've, what I've noticed is, is um, it's, it's difficult for me to have people that are not on it in the challenge groups because I've noticed it's not everyone, but... You know, it happens that those people don't have the same experience and so they, they don't get the same results and then I can't help them because they're coming to me and they're not, you know, they're not getting the results they want or they're having problems, but they're not taking the advice that I gave them. So in that, in the situation where they have a goal and they can't reach that goal on their own, they don't have the tools to get there on their own and I know that this is going to help them then in order for me to work with them, they need to, to take my advice, right? That's how I feel about it. But, um, <laughs> so I guess I'm a little bit stricter about it, but it's, it's in the sense of, of me caring and that this is, this is going to help them. So that's what I really emphasize with people. I, I like it. Forget what I said. I like what Chanel said. <laughs> Yeah, not, not, in a sure that you, not in a pushy way in, in, a, in a, like sometimes you just got to step up and lead but feel out each situation it depends right so I you know I would say to someone heart to heart especially if I have a really good um, relationship with them I would say don't make this harder on yourself 
like heart to heart. Don't make this harder on yourself. You can't get this nutrition anywhere else. Doesn't matter what you eat all day. Doesn't matter if you eat salads all day. You still can't. You can't get Japanese medicinal mushrooms. You can't get uh, super chlor uh, algae. You can't, you know, you can't get maca. You can't get these things. I mean, you can, but you can spend eight hundred dollars a month buying them individually. So that's how I feel about it. <laughs> <laughs> You have to make sure that you spend a lot of time in step two so yeah. that you develop that rapport with them so that they trust you yeah. and know that you know the product that that you're, you know, not selling but trying to, you know, impress upon them how important it is and how valuable it is. So it's not, you're not just going to, you know, throw it at them and say, you got to take this. Trust me, it's amazing. You have to build that rapport so that they do have that trust in you and believe that what you're saying is true and, is, and has value. And so you also Absolutely. have to do that. Yeah, yeah. There's a reason that Chanel has like has the best Shakeology retention rate on our team. By <laughs> that's it right there. So we'll have her do a training on Shakeology. <laughs> that's a good idea. Does anyone else have any other questions? I have one more slide. I just want to close this out with, and I, I won't keep long, won't make it be long. Um, I have to go back to sharing my screen here, sorry. Here's, if I can get this last one. Just, I felt like it was, it was sort of fitting to close this out tonight, if I can, if I can make it happen. Let's see, ah, oh, there we go. I wanted to just talk, I just wanted to close this out talking about the transition curve because this is something I learned really early on and I, it happens really in all parts of your life when you're starting something new. And, and not just when you're starting something new. Like as you go through life, you'll notice that when you start something, whether it's as a challenger or as a new coach or even as a new rank of, an, of being a new coach or even having a baby, <laughs> whatever it is, you'll notice that people and yourself included, like I, I get really excited because have what we call uninformed optimism. And you go headlong into these challenges or into this thing and you're excited right you think oh this is great even the first week of the challenge you'll see challengers are all posting they're all posting right everyone's really engaged <laughs> and then all of a sudden you kind of hit this point where you're like oh this is harder and this happens even as a coach because some coaches come out with a bang and they you know are able to bring in a lot of great you know challengers in the first month but then then they realize it's not always that easy, right? Sometimes you just have an easier month and you have what we call informed pessimism and that's when you slide down the scale. And at the bottom of that is this, what they call the crisis. And for me, that's your fight or flight spot. And you know, you'll notice it in your challengers and you'll notice it in yourself and in your team as coaches, as you grow coaches, is that once people understand the challenges in this, they have a choice. Are they going to fight through those challenges or are they going to quit? And that's why you see a lot of challengers drop off in that sort of week two, week three of your program. Um, but then you'll have a couple of really awesome ones that kind of push through. They have that fight sort of that fight desire in them to get further on. And then they, then we start to grow further. We start to do better. And with this informed optimism, because we understand what to expect and how to handle it and how to improve. It's coming back from a failure, so to say. Um, so I just wanted to share that with you guys because it is a normal thing to go through. I still go through it in this business and you know, that's what this team is here for, is to help you through that tough crisis of meaning. So when you're having tough times, make sure you reach out and know you're not alone going through this. Um, but you're going to help more people if you stick this out. Um, if this were easy, then everyone would be doing it and making a ridiculous amount of money and, and everyone would be fit and healthy. It's not. And you're making those hard decisions. So thanks for being here. And um, I'm excited to see as our team continues to grow. Um, I was talking with Colleen and, and Chanel today about how like a year ago, it was just me pretty much posting and success fit, just me saying anything. And now there's so much talk, it's really exciting. So you gotta just keep pushing through to see your ripple grow. Um, and that's it, that's it for tonight. I'm gonna stop the recording and just uh, say thanks again, everyone for being on. I hope this was informative and if you have some specific
you want to learn more about that you're not getting in the other trainings, let us know and we'll add it to the training. Okay, thanks guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye.